Welcome to the Path to Savings, a journey toward financial security and freedom. In a world filled with temptations and easy spending, how can we build reserves and reduce unnecessary expenses? Start by automating transfers. Apps like Digit or Capital can help you save without even thinking about it. Be mindful of your spending habits, from grocery shopping to entertainment choices. Plan ahead, use coupons, and explore free or discounted options in your community. Consider your lifestyle choices. Restrict online shopping, refinance loans, bundle services, and make energy efficient changes at home. These small adjustments can lead to substantial savings. Implement strategic budgeting, the 50-30-20 rule, where 50% of income goes to necessities, 30% to wants, and 20% to savings and debt can provide a clear path to financial goals. And don't forget to maximize interest by using high yield savings accounts. Remember, the path to savings is not a one-time effort. It's a continuous journey of conscious decisions, regular assessment, and alignment with your financial goals. Embrace these strategies and take control of your financial future. A shout out to Ariel Serber, who is in the chat. Thank you for watching live. For the panel, how effective are apps like Digit and Capital in helping people save? I actually, I'm not familiar with them myself. Miss Mint, Miss Mint, <laughs> you know. Well, I, I think we're talking about the 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 apps that automatically move money from mm -hmm. your bank account to other things. Um, I never actually have used any of those apps, but I did automate everything from my paycheck to savings account. Um, I automate uh, from my business. That's how I automate and I give myself a paycheck. But one of the things I did learn was pay yourself first. You know, make sure that money is going into that 401k for those of you who have those types of jobs. Make sure it's going into that HSA. If you can max them out, I'm all about maxing out the HSAs, the 401ks, the IRAs, if you can do that. But at least put something in there first and then you automate your savings so that it's, it's kind of what Rocky was saying. If you have your goals, have the money go over there first and you don't have to worry about the savings part of it. And I will say I do appreciate all of the apps now. They make it so easy to just, you know, oh, we're just going to round this up to a dollar and put it in your bank account. Like, OK, that's cool. Uh, so I'm trying to get my family to use all of them. Um, I love it. Yeah, I think they're really great for young people who haven't mm -hmm. experienced what it's like to save a chunk of money um, and may not be motivated by that yet. I think it can be a really useful tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I second and third every, what everybody's saying. I mean, particularly for, for young folks. I mean, uh, this whole generation, a couple of generations just grew up with phones in their hands. So they're that's how they track their life. So uh, Hey, just keep on doing what you're used to. And also, too, you get these nudges. I mean, if we're talking about financial mm -hmm. wellness, financial behavior. All right. You get to see, you know, dashboards. Everything is gamification now, you know, all of this. And they're like, so I'd rather people, although I'm from a different you know, generation, we status for real. We're like, you know, when you get that new whip, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> but now the young folks coming up, their, their status is, hey. You know, I, I've got X, Y, Z stock or this, that and the other. I've heard that from young people. I have them in my class and I'm like, OK, if y'all uh, competing and gamifying like that, oh, right on, you know, with those apps. Right. And they can give us. I love it. So, yeah, I love it. The kids are flexing their investment accounts I'm like, OK, yeah. uh, my friends and I, we weren't like that. <laughs> <laughs> we were still that learning DOS crazy. back in the day, you know, backslash. No. <laughs> oh, wow. OK. Yeah, that's old school. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I, I had DOS. Well, I, you know, I haven't used the apps. I'm not a young man. But even as a financial advisor, the old fashioned way, like there have been times when I could have lowered my withholding for taxes. And my wife and I had a discussion and said, let's just leave it where it is because we like having that um, tax refund come back. And it's sort of like a built in way to save money. So that works too. Like, yeah. you know, you can use the IR IRS as your 
tax saving strategy. And you know, we have we've always we always have an app available to us. It's called <laughs> the Yellow Pad. You know, the pen and paper. I, it, it's it's still unbeatable to be. I, I mean, I know we have spreadsheets. You know, uh, Google, whatever it may be. But you know, there is actually uh, research behind journaling, writing things down. You know, becoming one with what's what's you know from your emotions, from your spirit, and getting one. We're talking about alignment and all that. Well, you know, when we write a card, when we write a letter, we feel that it's it's different from an email, is it not? Uh, you know, when we're sitting there writing it. So old school, I, hey, cliche as it is, back of the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Oh, go ahead. I gotta add. I I have to tell you guys, I'm not on TikTok a lot, but the big trend I'm seeing on TikTok is uh, making your own budget envelopes now. So I got lost in the rabbit hole of restock refrigerator restocks, but now there is this thing of making your own budget envelopes, and people, the kids are going back to cash budgeting envelopes. I'm like, look at that. That There's cool. something to be said for physically like holding mm -hmm. something in your hand. Like it just, there's something yep. about it that technology like can't take away. And it's definitely, I don't think it's sustainable. It wasn't sustainable for us, but when you're getting started, when you're a young person, then it can be really impactful to mm -hmm. feel m having money and feel not having money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to I was going to add a follow up to my IRS savings, like the withholding. I'm, I was much more willing to do it before when there were zero percent interest rate. Like I did, I felt like I wasn't really giving much up because if I had the cash, I could invest it. But at zero percent interest, just if I wanted to keep it safe, I wasn't making anything. But now, if I can get five percent in a money market fund, I'd rather have that cash uh, generating interest and not have Uncle Sam collecting the interest. Sure. Jen, are, do you have any maybe unconventional ways to reduce unnecessary spending? Uh, I wish that I had ways that were a little sexier. Um, maybe then we would have a, a number one podcast. Um, but I think that the old, like, I think the coming back to the emotional intelligence and knowing yourself, knowing what you will say yes to, but more importantly, what you will say no to. Um, looking at, I think looking at your past expenses can be as powerful as tracking in real time, especially if you're busy tracking in real time doesn't really work for you. If you can go back to the last 90 days and look at what you spent, then that can be helpful in maybe not making some of the spending mistakes or whatever you view as a mistake, not making some of those in the future. Um, or you can see a pattern that says, oh, this I thought was something I'm not supposed to spend money on, but every time I spend money on it, I'm really happy. I'm in a really good place. And knowing that that's kind of where you want to spend money on guilt-free. Uh, so I think probably my biggest hack might be going and looking at your past transactions uh, to help with either making more of those purchases in the future or fewer of them. Oh, I would love to add to this. Uh, as far as unconventional ways to spend less, uh, this is where technology is your best friend. Buying your groceries through a grocery app. So because we're on the road, we use the Walmart for pickup. I've saved so much money because I love my husband, but going to the grocery store with him, next thing you know, there's like, uh, you know, yogurt covered pretzels and there's a bottle of wine. Like, how did that get in here? Uh, so oh I, gosh. and I, was are we like, married to the same person? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> same problem. It was like, how did we come to the grocery store for five things? It was $120. But uh, I love the grocery apps. I was using them before the pandemic on Instacart. It does cut down spending a lot. The other hack that I've used is with Amazon, because I know sometimes we get addicted to Amazon that, you know, get it by tomorrow. 
what I've started doing was um, putting things in the cart. Like if I'm thinking about it, like, oh, Jen mentioned this, I'm going to put it in the cart. And I wait until the end of the month to actually buy things. Because by the time the end of the month comes and you go and look in the cart, it was like, did I, did I really need that like glitter pen? Like I did not need that. So that those are the two things that have helped uh, me with like the unnecessary spending is the grocery apps and and let it sit in a cart for a couple of weeks, then decide if you really want it. Mm. Yes, yeah. I love grocery shopping online because it also allows you to go right to your pantry, right to your fridge, see what you have, create a meal plan around that. And you can make your grocery list as you go throughout the week, just adding stuff in the app uh, so yes. you're not overbuying. And yes, I second that. Right. I think it's maybe become so ingrained in my brain that I didn't think it was a hack, but yes, <laughs> equally obsessed. I guess an, another a hack would not be go to the grocery store hungry. Uh, <laughs> Cause I, I know that. Makes, and then, uh, and then I'm glad both of you offer those hacks because I'm about to go to Costco in about 20 minutes and <laughs> do it on your like, phone before you get there. <laughs> right. Right. I, I, and I would say the kind of like the reverse, which is, or two things, uh, you know, and let's let's investigate how we feel about spending, too. Uh, where do, where do we get certain thoughts or relationships or you know values? How we how have we experienced spending? Uh, because sometimes we may be obviously so, you know overspending can be detrimental, but underspending can subtract from well being too. So having a healthy relationship with spending, you know, with worthiness, or, you know, with value, your 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 uh, your preferences is is a good thing. A healthy relationship, which is key, a healthy relationship with spending, because we also have seen that you know once folks save up and save and invest and uh, accumulate wealth over time, and they get into their retirement period, they don't spend that, you know, and so it's it. it but, the, the earlier you start ha developing a healthy relationship with spending, then uh, hopefully you'll start enjoying your, your life more. Let's move to segment four, where we get to talk about mindfulness. Mindfulness. 